Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over on how to create your own personal website and everything involved in here is completely for free. You don't have to spend a single cent when doing so. I'll be using GitHub Pages with Jekyll. And so a high level overview, the GitHub Pages actually just combines everything together in a code ready, production oriented format ready for deployments. And Jekyll is a static site generator where essentially you would predefine each one of your, I guess, pages and then Jekyll sort of combines them all together in this one gargantuan website ready to use. And the great part about this particular process is that you don't really even need an extensive coding background since many web templates out there are like really really crisp and clean and you can just use that as a foundation and then you just replace the bits that you just want to you know express and i just actually want to highlight three foundational templates that you can use and build off you know your own website or your own business off of and so let's dig right in academic pages Jack Flex Alfolio Now, I'll actually be using Alfolio for the rest of this video, you know, just to demonstrate on how we can use such a great foundation for, you know, our own needs. Pause this video to ensure that you completed these steps on your current machine. And just make sure that your machine has the appropriate software. Uh, these are the particular versions of my software that I recommended that you download on your end. Okay, so I'm going to be going through on how to actually use this as a foundation for your own given website. So first things first, you want to go ahead and fork this repository and remember that all of the links are in the description uh, of this video. So go ahead and check that out if you are following along. So I'm just forking this and it should take a few seconds um, and I just put it to my own repository over here. So once I've actually um, forked this go ahead and go to settings you want to change the repository name to whatever your username is going to be um so in this case it would be spencer powell just for me um however uh you want to incorporate github.io as well and go ahead and rename that like that this is just standard practice for any uh, oriented github pages now once you have successfully changed the name uh, go ahead and pull in a terminal and i will go ahead and you know just clone this uh, https is fine uh, typing git clone and this should take a few seconds as well but i'm just pulling all the code uh, on my local machine Okay, great. So I only took a few moments, um, but like all of my files were now downloaded onto my given directory. Go ahead and CD into that. And you have all of the files in here. Just check that all out. You have all the files here. Now, remember that we are trying to somewhat get this, you know, just for starting purposes. We're trying to get this particular foundation where we can just traverse through this particular web page. Uh, and so we could probably change like, you know, the first name, maybe the middle initial, last name, and maybe change like one of the submenus names. So I'll be along those lines just for demonstration purposes. Let's go here. Um, this is my, uh, this is my particular editor. I'm just using Adam, uh, but this is where I'll be changing a few things to demonstrate that particular change. Now let's go ahead and open up the config. Uh, notice that over here, I'll probably split screen this later. Um, over here, this is like U of an R name. We can probably change that over here if the website's blank. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we are not going to use a middle initial or middle name. Let's use our last name over here. Let's make sure we save this as we go on. And there's a few things I'll be changing throughout this uh, particular config file. Uh, and feel free to follow along, but you definitely want to change the URL and base URL if you're using this as a personal website. And then there's one thing, as I was just playing around with this particular repository, there's one thing that I want to change, and this is making sure that this is going to be false image magic. Um, this just had a lot of issues with that. So uh, I don't want to resize for that particular situation. Now, since I am also on the Windows machine, there's one thing that I need to change, and this might not be applicable on your end, but uh, when you are, when we're actually going to be deploying, we actually want to incorporate 
dash over here um, just because we're on the Windows machine. So, oh, and there is one thing that also needs to change within the gem file. We are just going to be incorporating this additional gem, uh, which is just an additional requirement uh, that's just needed for like a Windows machine type of an environment. Once we have all the requirements out of the way, uh, we would want to go ahead and start changing this particular website. Uh, notice that this is not our current website, but uh, just, just for example uses. So let's go have some. Let's go ahead and get some like text within this paragraph over here, and let's change like maybe the submenu for instance. So let's go ahead and search uh, biography. Biography. I spelled that right. Yeah. Okay, and let's say this is some random text, uh, random text, uh, text, this should change front end. Okay, so that's one thing that we will change. Another thing is, let's see, the submenu um, idea over here. Let's go ahead, um, say like changed or whatnot. So. Once we are satisfied with all of our changes, make sure that you stage everything. So go ahead and stage everything and commit it. Uh, updated changes to environments. Environments, and this is very important. This is also the same equivalent to just git add period uh, at your root directory, and then just going ahead and just grabbing, or just committing uh, all of your additions to your given repository. Uh, so that's what that would look like. So once we are satisfied with our given changes, uh, we want to run bundle install, bundle install. This would take like a hot second. So this bundle install actually goes ahead and looks at our gem file that we have over here. And it literally just downloads everything, all the dependencies here, and it gets it into this one one repository instance right there so we have basically our image uh, once we have that we want to go ahead and, and execute jekyll serve uh, this is just going to be looking at all of our static web pages html files combines them together into one large website uh, for us to survey and this only took like a minute to run and notice over here for the service address this should actually be the exact same address that appears on your side uh, however, we can actually check out what our website looks like and voila, this is what we have. So we notice we have our random text. Uh, we have our first name, last name at the very top. Notice our menu has actually changed as well. And notice that when we actually go forth and, you know, uh, go ahead and start changing some stuff. So let's say we have changed over here. Go ahead and stay, save that, stage it. Um, and just go ahead and refresh that we have changed voila over there i mean it's really really quite amazing on you know what whatever we could be doing over here uh so we stage that just go ahead and refresh that voila so you can keep on going back and forth you know, keep on changing whatever it is that you need to change for your given website and so once you are satisfied with how your website will look like um go ahead and cancel out of this and now is actually going to be the time to start deploying. And there's one thing I want to point out before I actually run deployment, and this is, might be a Windows machine thing, but I included this fixed permission over here because I was getting some weird, like very weird error when it comes to moving files around when it comes to the deployment stuff. So I included that piece over here, and that is what that fix is going to be over here. So let's stage that, uh, add it in deployment. Uh, update or permission update let's go ahead and commit that and then once that has been committed let's go ahead and deploy this so what we want to do is go ahead and do a bin um, not source but that will be deploy event user and just go ahead and press yes so I already ran this prior uh, which is under the source um, branch however um, with the master branch is pretty much the exact same thing uh, the only difference is that when you first run it, it will actually create additional branches. You have your source branch and you have a GitHub pages branch as well. And I received a deployed successfully over here. Uh, and then this is just the output that's associated with the deployment. Um, and that is that. I uh, notice we still have, they're yeah, refusing to remove that, but it seems like our permissions have 
or has operated successfully. So let's go ahead and pull up our GitHub over here. Let's refresh this. Uh, and then we can go ahead and go to actions. Uh, notice here, this is the GitHub actions for our deployment, pages build and deployment. This will take probably maybe two minutes to run. Uh, so we'll let that run. And what we should be seeing is that when we go to settings and then go to pages, uh, this is our website. Uh, this is where, this is the link that we will be using by copy that once this box turns green. Uh, we can then access um, our website and we should be seeing something similar to this. Um, but we, of course, had our given changes and so we'll probably just have our first name, last name, and some additional text. And maybe this text, the submed news text is going to be a little bit different. Uh, but that'll be pretty much that. So let's see if it finished running. So it did. All right, let's go to settings and then let's go to pages. And let's go ahead and open this up. And... Oh, Voila. So notice that there's a slight bug with the, I think it was like the, the repository. If you zoom in at 100%, you won't see the picture, but if you zoom out, you will.